The band that was supposed to take Metallica's place. Stadium tours. Platinum albums. A tour with Van Halen. What went wrong? Formed in 1978, Dokken would release more than 11 studio albums and feature more than 24 members. We're just going to be looking at their classic lineup between 84 and 89, featuring the members Don Dokken, Jeff Pilson, Wild Nick Brown, and George Lynch. In 1983, Dokken was in a really bad place. Their album had flopped and they were more than $2 million in debt. Their record label really wanted to drop them, but the band was able to convince Elektra to give them one more chance. And thus, Tooth and Nail was released. The album would go on to peak at number 49 and sell more than a million copies, spawning arguably the most successful single, Alone Again. Yeah. The band certainly wasn't living in mansions and driving supercars, but they were a commercially successful act with a real shot at making something happen. Next, the band would release Under Lock and Key, Released in 1985, this album featured hairspray and pantsuits, and also some songs. I was in Doc and Stop 200 listeners in the world. Accompanying the release of Under Lock and Key, the band also packaged all of their music videos into a video cassette that went on to sell more than 100,000 copies. Needless to say, Doc and was growing. Things were good. To, the remote isn't working. Released in 1987, Back for the Attack would go on to peak at number 13 on the mainstream charts and sell, again, a million copies. This album also featured arguably their most iconic song, Dream Warriors, which was featured in the movie Dream Warriors. Also, not wearing pantsuits, so improvements all around. It's also worth noting that Back for the Attack was the first album where Mick Brown was not credited as Mick Brown, but instead, Wild Mick. The band embarked on a tour upon the release of Back for the Attack, opening for Judas Priest. They were on the road for more than a year, grew their fan base considerably, pushed a lot of albums. Heavy metal definitely rules. All that being said, the band needed a break. But how do you say no to Van Halen? Dokken would go on the Monsters of Rock tour, the lineup consisting of Van Halen at the top, Scorpions, Dokken, Metallica, and Kingdom Come. They did not get along here. When the band desperately needed time apart, they embarked on a year-long stadium tour. But in all fairness, how do you say no to Van Halen? The New York Times wrote an article on the Monsters of Rock tour. The only mention of Dokken throughout the entire article is during Dokken's set, a record number of hot dogs were sold. At this time, the feud between the singer, Don Dokken, and the guitar player, George Lynch, grew to unprecedented heights. There's even a magazine cover that's just about the two of them not getting along. A quote from Dokken says, as the band was riding in a limo through the streets of West London towards a gig at Wembley Arena, Dokken recalls, he got me in a headlock and started punching me. We just went at it. Needless to say, things were bad, and they were forced to spend time with each other, which only made it worse. The band's record contract expired, and they were free agents, meaning they could sign a new deal with a label and make a lot of money. This band was paid a million dollars for a live album. They had three platinum albums. They had just gone on a stadium tour with arguably the most iconic 80s band of all time. And they had been featured in a very popular and very well-liked movie franchise. They had tons of leverage. They sold millions of albums. They got to play stadiums. They had music videos. I mean, they had a great career. They just could have been more. If they just wouldn't have worn the pantsuits, probably would have been better. But, oh well. Just turn around when you listen to it, I guess. And put a bag over your head. I don't... You can pick just between those two, though.